Thank you so much for taking this interview with us, Ms. Bollinger. I have a few questions that I would like to ask you. Okay. So my first question is, how long have you taught at WPS? I've taught for four years now. And did you always teach science? And which science subjects specifically and what grades? Um, I've taught honors chemistry, I've taught IB chemistry, and so I've only taught for four years actually, and in those four years I've taught chemistry. Do you do a lot of labs or experiments in your classes, and can you give me some examples? Yes, we do a lot of labs. That's the fun part about honors chemistry, um, because you can actually, it's great to get hands-on practice with some of the theory that we've learned, and to see that chemistry in real life. Um, IB, the International Baccalaureate, uh, classes. It's all about applying the knowledge that we've learned in our classroom or in the formal classroom setting in the lab. Um, we do um, empirical formula. We learn about empirical formulas through a lab. We do, we make voltaic cells in the lab so we can actually see how batteries work. We do titrations and we do calorimetry experiments where we can actually see how different solutions give different forms of energy. So we actually do a lot of fun labs in, in our class. What is the funniest or best experience that you have had as a teacher, and what is your worst? The best experience for me is when I watch and I see everybody in the class getting something. They understand a hard or difficult concept. Concept when they It's a sense of accomplishment for them, and it's just so awesome to see when everybody's understanding something that they may initially have been very you know, apprehensive about. That's fantastic. The difficult thing is when you see students struggling and you want everybody to be successful. And it's very, it just, it's hard sometimes to see how, how some folks are really trying and sometimes maybe it's a little bit more difficult. And that's probably the most difficult thing is when you see people struggling and you want them to get it, you want them to understand it. Can you explain the difference between standard, AP, and IB as it relates to your subject? And if you have any tips for those students taking these classes? Sure. Standard chemistry or honors chemistry in 10th grade is really all about learning the concepts the first time you're introduced to chemistry. Um, so it's really about the work and about the time that you're willing to put into the subject. And then when you go to AP, um, advanced placement chemistry, we don't offer advanced placement chemistry here at IB. We offer into the IB chemistry. Um, it really has a lot to do with how much of the theory now we apply to you know, into our lab and how you actually can understand the, the abstract concepts. So we, it's basically a progression from going from the general knowledge of chemistry to the abstract concepts and you being able to problem solve um, situations where you haven't seen that exact problem before. So in IB it's really about can you see something that you've never seen before based on your basic knowledge and be able to solve those problems. When I asked other students about what they would like me to ask you, Something that came up was the Group 4 project that the IB seniors are doing. Can you tell me more about this project and share some tips that will help students to do well with it? Yes, absolutely. So the Group 4 project, if, you are a, if you're an IB candidate, IB diploma candidate, you will be participating in the Group 4 project where you and a team of other of your peers will be working together collaboratively on a specific topic. Um, we had a biotech symposium this year where you, where the students actually select their topic um, in, in medical technology that's been an innovation that's been discovered in the last year. And then they have to go and research the actual topic, they have to meet or actually call the individuals that were the creators of that innovation, and they have to present a five to seven minute presentation on that, that particular concept or application. It's about collaboration. Um, it's a, it's a cross-functional team between physics and chemistry and biology. So it's really about working well with other students, um, getting uncomfortable with something that you may, you know, that you may not be too comfortable with making phone calls and talking to professors or doctors that you don't know initially. But you'll find when you get through that that, that everyone wants to be very helpful. And um, it's just a really great project. So that's something, that, as a group for science, um, if you take Group 4 Science IB, that's something you will have to take, and it's just a matter of just learning how to work well with others and roll up your sleeves and get it done. Wow, that sounds like an interesting project. Um, do you have any opinions or suggestions for science course selection? Um, if you're interested in being an engineer, um, probably chemistry and physics. 
Um, if you're interested in be going into the medical profession, you know, bio biology and chemistry are your two, the two sciences you're going to need in college. Um, if you're, you know, I think there's just so many different options for you here when you come into the science department at Windermere Prep Upper School that you have environmental science, you've got marine biology, you've got physics, you've got chemistry, you've got biology, you have anatomy and physiology. So you have a lot of, a lot of options when you come to high school. Do you have a story or experience from when you were a student that you think students could learn from today? I think the one thing is when I was in, I was a ninth grader, which is about 100 years ago, um, they, uh, I, took, I actually met with my counselor, and my counselor did not recommend that I go to college. They didn't really think that I was going to be successful in going to college. And I was the only, I was the first one in my family to ever go to college. And I really wanted to go to college. So I, you know, talked to my father. My father said, well, why don't, you know, if you want to go, you, you need to go. And so against what my counselor had said, so I'm not saying this to our counselors. Our counselors are wonderful here. But against the probably recommendations, I went to college and finished my degree in chemistry, got a, mat, got a graduate degree in material science and engineering. So if you really have a passion for something, my message is you need to pursue it and you really need to, you know, make, and you'll be able to make it happen. So always be, pursue your passion. What tips do you have that could help students better prepare themselves for your class? Good question. Math. So if you, if you, you may not realize it, but chemistry has a lot of math. So if you come into chemistry, thinking that you're going to run or get away from math, that's not the case. Physics and chemistry, especially physics more than chemistry, uses a lot of math. But you need to be strong in math, you need to understand it, be comfortable with math, and also be willing to you know, spend time doing work and doing the practice problems and, and, getting, and getting more proficient at those problems. And finally, is there one thing that you hope your students can take away from your class? that they, they're proud with what they've actually been able to accomplish. When they can see how far they've come in the understanding of this specific, top, this specific subject, that they really can and they are able to comprehend high level problems based on what they've learned these last several years. Thank you so much for taking this interview with us. You're very welcome. Thank you for asking me.